I'm Dave Rabin. I've been in the satellite communications industry for over 20 years. I'm going to speak on satellite communications and particularly I'm going to speak about satellite communications for mobility, both in terms of on the pause and on the move. In the context of VSAT mobility, there's really two types of VSAT mobility. There's on the pause and then there's on the move. On the pause is literally what that means. It, the concept is that there's a VSAT terminal that's uh, part of a, a truck, a vehicle, uh, something that moves around. And the, v, the VSAT itself is inoperative until the vehicle stops, it pauses, and the operator of the vehicle deploys the VSAT, pushes a button and deploys the VSAT and establishes communications. That's on the pause. On the move is where the VSAT terminal is constantly operating and communicating while the vehicle, or the airplane, or the maritime vessel is moving. Why VSAT for mobility communications? There's actually several choices for satellite communications for mobility applications. For a long time, the uh, predominant choice was what are known as L-band or S-band systems. Uh, these are systems provided by operators such as Inmarsat or Thuraya or Globalstar. The nature of these systems is that they operate at lower frequencies, two, three uh, gigahertz. And these lower frequencies enable the use of omnidirectional antennas. You, you don't have to have an antenna that has to be parabolic or large and has to be accurately pointed to the satellite. So these, these systems are uh, very easy to use. Uh, and operate the terminals. The downside of these systems, these MSS mobile satellite systems, is that the amount of spectrum that these satellite op operates on are very small. And that means that the cost of using that spectrum is very high. VSATs, however, operate over a larger amount of spectrum. Uh, the cost of the VSAT terminals are more, but the cost of using the spectrum, the cost of the capacity is much less. Uh, it, it is this that has made VSATs for mobility, for uh, particularly on the move, as uh, a key solution for such applications as maritime, because it enables crews and uh, maritime companies to maintain broadband connectivity to their vessels uh, at all times. On the pause is actually straightforward. On the pause is where the VSAT terminal is not operational until the vehicle or the vessel uh, is stationary. So the concept is that uh, the terminal itself is self-deploying. The vehicle uh, when it's driving or, or moving, the terminal is stowed. When the vehicle comes to a stop and the operator parks the vehicle, he basically hits a button which enables the terminal to self-deploy. The terminal will uh, open up. There'll be a GPS inside the terminal which will instruct the terminal where to find the satellite. The reflector has a motor which points it to the satellite and the satellite antenna control unit talks to the indoor unit and commissions and becomes active. On the pause VSAT applications, what do people do when they're using on the pause applications? The most classic application is remote satellite news gathering. This is where there's a uh, TV crew they're in a remote location and they're generating a live video feed that is transmitted via satellite uh, into the studio. But there are other applications that can be done. Uh, applications both for business as well as government. For business, the applications can be just simply bringing the services out to your customers. For instance, uh, deploying 
automatic teller machines or uh, banking platforms out to remote locations. Uh, this can be done actually for uh, different events like a sporting event. It can also be done in response to a disaster. If a hurricane has come through and cleared everything out, a, a bank or a corporation can uh, deploy infrastructure very quickly with On The Pause. And governments likewise. Governments can use On The Pause to enable emergency communications, but they can also use it to enable um, a range of regular services to citizens. And this is through uh, mobile kiosks. These kiosks could support voting. Uh, they could support uh, all sorts of e-governance services. On the move is actually quite challenging. And, it, and it's challenging because, as the very name implies, the terminal is continually moving. And because the terminal moves, uh, the terminal has to track the satellite and then in addition to tracking the satellite, the path between the terminal and the satellite will change with regards to the link characteristics. So the link is very dynamic. This means that the terminal needs to be able to adapt to changing link quality conditions. In addition, there can be frequent interruptions of the satellite communications. If the terminal is on a truck and it goes under a bridge, it goes under trees, the path will be lost. And the terminal needs to reestablish the path very quickly. Uh, in addition, there are a number of FCC and ITU regulations that uh, require that uh, some of the terminals be tracked, particularly those that are operating uh, at uh, C-band frequencies. Uh, so there's a range of challenges which make on the move uh, a more difficult uh, environment to operate in. And it's important to understand the technologies that have been developed in order to uh, solve these challenges. On the move terminals, uh, there, there's very different types of terminals depending on the application. And the applications are uh, land mobile, maritime, and then aeronautical. If you look at a land mobile terminal, uh, it, really what we're talking about is a terminal that attaches to a vehicle, such as a truck or car or train, uh, but it, it's something that's gonna operate on land. And if you think about vehicles, well, you need to be able to drive the vehicle under bridges, uh, and so you have relatively low clearance. Um, so you have the option to have uh, a, a, as a flat antenna, uh, but when you go to a flat antenna, you sacrifice some of the antenna performance characteristics, which means ultimately you will not get as high a throughput as with a parabolic antenna. However, a parabolic antenna has a much better performance. Uh, beyond land mobile, the next general category is maritime, ocean going or uh, coastal vessels. Um, the nature of these is different in that obviously these are environments where uh, there's a, a tremendous amount of uh, moisture. In, in addition, particularly for ocean going vessels, uh, these vessels may get a lot of water, a lot of ocean spray, particularly as the, um, the weather environment gets very bad. So these antennas all need to have uh, radomes, which uh, seal the antenna and which are as watertight as possible. Uh, in a maritime environment, uh, the antenna control unit and the satellite modem itself will be below deck and the antenna will be above deck. Aeronautical is yet a different category and Obviously, the uh, key parameter here is to have as low a profile of an antenna as possible. It needs to have as little drag as possible. Uh, so these antennas um, are uh, fairly complex and actually quite costly. Of all the three categories, the aeronautical antenna is, is the most expensive. And it's the most expensive because 
of the strict requirements that it comes to uh, installing these antennas onto and uh, particularly airliners that operate at very high speeds. And these electronics all must be uh, flight certified. On the move, satellite communications is, um, is challenging. There's, uh, the, the satellite link is dynamically changing. Uh, there's a, a number of things that the, the satellite uh, ground system has to compensate for. So there's a number of enabling technologies that have been developed to make on the move work. Uh, there's adaptive coding and modulation, which enables the forward channel to be dynamically adjusted based on the link condition. And we can do similar things on the return channel. Uh, there's automatic beam switching so that as a vehicle or vessel moves from one satellite footprint to another satellite footprint, the satellite terminal can automatically change from satellite to satellite. There's Doppler compensation because as a vehicle moves faster and faster, the uh, effects of uh, frequency shift uh, become greater and the ground system has to compensate for these frequency shifts. Uh, return channel spreading is a particular challenge because with these remote terminals, we want the terminals to be as small as possible, but the smaller the remote terminal, then the less uh, accuracy of the remote terminal. And that means that we may uh, interfere with adjacent satellites. So we have to spread the return channel in order to uh, operate within ITU uh, regulations. The satellite signal can be lost if the vehicle goes uh, under trees or under a bridge or if the vessel turns and a superstructure blocks the antenna. So we need to be able to maintain a persistent IP connection and we need to have a very rapid recovery once that satellite link is, is enabled. And there are techniques which are applied to uh, maintain a persistent IP connection and to have rapid reacquisition of the, of the satellite channel. And of course, there's, there's many types of uh, on-the-move antennas. And so we need to have the VSAT ground system have interoperability with a wide range of, of satellite antennas. And then finally, uh, in certain applications, it's important to be able to track and keep a record of where the vehicle or vessel has been. Adaptive coding and modulation is a key technology uh, that's being used to uh, enable mobility. Adaptive coding and modulation, or ACM, is a technique, a technology whereby uh, the remote terminal is constantly measuring and evaluating the receive signal from the hub or gateway station. As that signal degrades, the remote sends instruction to the gateway or hub station to change the combination of modulation or coding. Changing the modulation from 8PSK to QPSK enables better received signal at the remote similar with uh, changing the coding rate, perhaps from uh, rate 8 ninths to rate 1 half, also significantly improves the reception of the signal at the remote. The downside, of course, is that uh, the, as you change the mod code to become more robust, you get less effective throughput, but you're able to maintain the link even in, in very poor operating condition. And this is important because if you consider the satellite footprint, it's much like any typical uh, wireless communication systems. In the center of the footprint, the signal is very, very strong, and we can use a very efficient mod code. But as a vessel or vehicle moves to the outer edge of the satellite footprint, the signal will become weaker. And that's where dynamically changing the mod code will enable us to maintain the link uh, at all times. On the move, uh, whether it's on a, a vehicle, a, 
a maritime vessel or airplane, one of the key requirements is as small of an antenna as possible. The small antenna uh, is obviously important on an airplane where there's not a lot of surface area, but it's also important on uh, many vessels. There's not a lot of room to put antennas. The challenge with a small antenna is that the smaller the antenna, the less accurate the antenna is in terms of transmitting a signal to a satellite. The less accurate means that there's a possibility to interfere with a satellite that is adjacent to the satellite that you intend to transmit. And there are uh, regulations by the ITU and other organizations which specify the amount of energy that can be effectively leaked over to adjacent satellites. The technique that's used to overcome this is return channel spreading, where that transmission from the on-the-move vehicle or vessel is spread over a wider frequency band. So we take the waveform and instead of transmitting it over 100 kilohertz, we may transmit it over 400 kilohertz or 800 kilohertz, but we take that waveform and the same amount of energy and we spread it over a wider band. And that makes the, the energy um, per bit effectively to be much lower. And thus, even when we're transmitting into an adjacent satellite, the signal level is so low that it doesn't interfere with that satellite. So return channel spreading is a key technology to be used for on the move mobile, uh, terminal applications. So I've reviewed VSAT mobility on the pause and on the move. And as you can see, there's a lot of options, whether it's on the pause or on the move. And there's challenges that have been met effectively with uh, key technology features in these VSAT systems.